The day many of you have been waiting for. Ryzen 5 is officially out and the embargo has been lifted, so we have tons and tons of reviews. Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back to GamerMeld. Ryzen 5 has seen leaks and benchmarks from a multitude of areas thanks to early sales that shouldn't have happened. But now the embargo has been lifted and Ryzen 5 is on sale to the masses, which means we have tons of reviews to sift through. What I'm going to do is focus on the 1600X while referencing to the 1600, and I'll probably do the 1500X tomorrow. At first I was just going to combine them, but I just feel I can't give each of the CPUs the attention they deserve in one video. It's tough enough to sift through all the variables and possibilities on one CPU, much less two and ultimately four. There's just so many what ifs. To top it off, Ryzen is so different in its architecture that it's tough to even fully discuss. It's just really hard to form conclusions at this time, but I'm going to try my best to give you everything you need to know to make a purchasing decision. So let's get right into it. To start things off, let's just go over some differences between the Ryzen 5 1600 and 1600X CPUs with Intel so you can understand what to think about when comparing. All Ryzen models overclock. That includes ones without the X moniker. Even all have XFR, but the X simply means it can automatically boost clock a little higher. Intel, on the other hand, does have boosting capabilities, but only the K models have unlocked multipliers so they can offer overclocking. The 1600 and 1600X have 6 cores and 12 threads. The closest comparison cost-wise to the 1600X is either the i7-7700 for more, which is a 4-core 8-thread CPU that does not overclock, or the i5-7600K for a little less and a lot of times right at the same price and that doesn't have hyper-threading, and therefore only has 4 cores, but it can't overclock. As you can see, the 1600 and 1600X are quite different than the 1700 and 7600K, not even taking into account architectural differences, etc. Just keep these in mind while we go over it. It seems most reviewers only receive the 1500X and 1600X, so the 1600X is going to be the main one on the benchmarks. But keep in mind that the 1600 should be able to overclock near what the 1600X can. It's not a guarantee, but it makes sense considering these are bin CPUs, so they're essentially the same as their older siblings, and we've got some good overclocks out of the 1700. Okay, on to the benchmarks. It's tough to find ones exactly how I wanted them done, and since I don't possess Ryzen, I can't do my own, but let's just go through some with and without overclocks, and these are going to be coming from multiple sources, but I'll have them all linked in the description. First up, let's go through a few synthetic benchmarks. Single core performance with both the 1600X and 7600K working off automated boosts are pretty close with not horrible by any means, but does have the 1600X lagging behind. This Cinebench benchmark gives an amazing preview of single and multi-core performance, as well as actually giving you an idea of how beneficial multi-core processing is. Sure, single core performance differences are nice, but comparatively, utilizing more cores when parallelizing as possible is incredible. You can see the 1600X obliterates its comparatively priced Intel offerings as well as the more expensive 7700K. But these are just synthetics. Let's talk real application performance. Professional work, should I say. 7-Zip is really the same story in both compression and decompression with the 1600X dominating. Next up is 4K rendering in Premiere Pro. This is a weird one, as it easily beats out the i5-7600K, but it oddly loses to the 7700K. Now, this particular i7 certainly isn't in the price range of the 1600X, but it's just an odd result. Either way, in heavily threaded applications, Ryzen 1600X simply can't be beat when it comes to price to performance. So on to gaming. What many of you have probably been waiting for, really, here's the thing. If you plan on running 4K or even 1440p, there will be little to no difference between Ryzen and Intel with maybe one or two exceptions that honestly just purely seem to boil down to optimization issues. The biggest differences, of course, comes with 1080p, which makes the GPU less of a bottleneck, but once again remember, if you have a mid to low end GPU, that will almost always be your primary bottleneck. It's also tough to compare these, as many sites didn't overclock, but I have a few of those to compare. So let's get into the benchmarks. First up is Battlefield 1. The non-overclock 1600X has higher minimum FPS than the i5-7600K, but less average FPS. When the two are overclocked, the 7600K does beat out the 1600X in both minimum and average FPS. In Ashes of Singularity, the 7600K slightly loses to the 1600X in average, and it actually ties in minimum FPS, while the overclock 1600X beats the 7600K in average, but loses ever so slightly. We're talking margin of error stuff here in minimum FPS. So really, here's the thing. In gaming, the i5-7600K seems to beat the 1600X in most games by literally a couple to a few frames, with a couple exceptions that Ryzen is known for being bad in. So what does all this mean for you? 
Simply put, if you want to powerhouse in any program that utilizes more than four cores and eight threads, Ryzen is your card. If you focus on mostly professional work, but do some gaming on the side, Ryzen is your card. If you do a lot of game streaming, Ryzen is your card. If you fully focus on gaming, it's honestly tough to say. And games with the i7 clearly dominates. Even when it's clocked lower than the 6700K, this means it's utilizing Intel's eight threads in the i7. Yet in the same game, having more threads with the 1600X doesn't help. And people are still turning off SMT because while I don't think it hinders like it did, it clearly doesn't help. At least nothing like it should. You could argue the 1600X just has too many threads and it hinders it, but the 1500X clearly isn't receiving any benefit from theirs either. And I've shown benchmarks where the 1400 isn't utilizing all of its resources while the i5 is. Of course, this is Ashes of Singularity. It's a highly optimized game for more cores and more threads, but still. The answer seems to be that the 1600X is just not properly optimized. Ashes of Singularity's devs said it's not even fair to compare Ryzen in games right now. Of course, whether it will get said optimization or not mostly depends, at least in my eyes, how many gamers are using AMD. So ultimately, what do you think? Are you loving Ryzen? Ready to see it dominate in games? Or do you think it just won't happen? Let me know in the comments below. Before I go, I wanted to quickly run something by all of you. I'm thinking about doing an overview of deals on PC hardware and games at the end of news videos, but not every day. I'm just talking, say, every two or three days. What do you think of that? Let me know in the comments below. And of course, don't forget to check out the giveaway. If we get to 10,000 subscribers by the end of the month, I'll be upping the ante by giving away seven $20 gift cards. Just subscribe and click the link in the description for your chance to win. That does it for now. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe by clicking on the round icon in the middle. You can check out the most recent video and suggested video to the left. Thanks so much for coming, and as always, have a great day.